Welcome to Juniper Learning Bytes. My name is Zach Gibbs and I'm a content developer in education services within Juniper Networks. And today we will be discussing the Contrail Service Troubleshooting Learning Byte. Alright, so a good question you might have is what are services in Contrail? You know, services is something that is broadly used in networking and networking security. For example, a, a firewall might be considered a service, IDP might be considered a service, but it's different in Contrail or in the context of Contrail. Services in Contrail manage different components of Contrail. For example, uh, web user interfaces, analytics, database, that's all managed by services. The different services in Contrail are managed by the Supervisor D process. And what happens is this process launches services in Contrail as child processes. And you can check on the, uh, the status of all Supervisor D instances by using the Contrail status, or excuse me, the Contrail dash status command. And then you can use the service command to manipulate Supervisor D instances. For example, uh, you can start or stop different services such as the web user interface service you can restart if you like things like that and then this last uh, major bullet is very important different nodes run different services now why is that important well for example we have the config node that runs the supervisor web UI service the compute node doesn't run that service and the reason behind that is the config node handles all web user interface interactions. Compute node has nothing to do with that. So we're not going to run that service on the compute node to simply save resources. So we're not going to run that on there because we want to, you know, save resources. There's no reason to have it there. And if you actually logged into a compute node and, and checked out the supervisor web UI service, it would show as inactive or not running or, you know, it would show that it's not actively doing anything there. And then, for example, the compute node, uh, it runs the supervisor v router service. The config node doesn't run that. And the reason behind that is that the compute node has the v router. The config node doesn't. So why do we want to run that service on the config node if it's not necessary? That way, we do save resources. And so that's great. And this is important to keep in mind because you don't want somebody logging into the compute node and then looking for the supervisor web UI service because they're going to see something it looks like something's wrong it's currently inactive they're going to think there's a problem and they're going to start troubleshooting that problem when there's not a problem so keep that in mind that different uh, nodes run different services let's just jump to the uh, to the actual uh, GUI here Thirty. We actually want to go to port eight one four four three. Actually, before I do that, I think I want to do HTTPS. Okay, that's what I'm expecting to see. Uh, we can't. That web page is not available, and that that means there's something wrong. We're actually able to hit that IP address on uh, using HTTPS, but on that eight one four three port, but we cannot get anything from it. That that definitely leads us to a problem with the web user interface. So let's let's jump to the CLI. Okay, so with the CLI, let's use the contrail status command. And looking through this, we can actually see that the supervisor dash web UI service is inactive. Now that would definitely cause the problem that we saw just a few seconds ago with being unable to get in through the GUI. So just something else to just kind of shortcut I want to show you real quick is that we can use the grep command. We can grep supervisor to get a little more of a filtered output. You know, we just want to check the supervisor 
uh, instances here, we can see that you know we can see the supervisor web UI is inactive. And so that tells us that it's not another problem. You know, it's not a problem with the supervisor config service or the supervisor analytics service. And so that's okay. You know, we, we can actually go down the path of uh, troubleshooting the supervisor web UI uh, service. Now, something to keep in mind is the steps, the things that we're going to do in this learning byte. Yes, we're going to troubleshoot the supervisor web UI service, but these same steps could be used to troubleshoot the supervisor config service or the supervisor analytics service. So we can use these steps that you'll see in this learning byte to troubleshoot other supervisor or other contrail services. So let's use this service. Let's check out the actual status of the supervisor web UI uh, service. You see that it's stopped. Now it could be stopped for various different reasons. But uh, in, in this example, it's because I manually went in and stopped it to show you how to troubleshoot this. So, I mean, but there could be uh, many different reasons why uh, the actual service stopped. So, the next logical step would be to actually just start the uh, service. So, let's go ahead and do that. And the, the terminal uh, program kind of, the output's a little funny on this since it put it just on the next line made it look like a command but that's not a command that's just the output from starting the supervisor web UI service and we can see that it started okay web UI package okay so we're good there so let's actually check the status again alright we can see it's running we have a process ID of 14062 awesome that's what we want to see and so one last thing, let's actually uh, do the contrail status. We'll grep supervisor again. And we can see that's active. The supervisor web UI service is active. And that's awesome. That's what we want to happen. And so I just want to reiterate again that uh, we did uh, troubleshoot the supervisor web UI service, but you could use the methods that uh, we looked at in this learning byte to uh, troubleshoot other services as well. So this is more about troubleshooting services in general, although we just used the supervisor web UI as an example. All right, so let's jump back to the GUI and let's let's reload that page. All right, this is a good sign. We can get to the login page. That's what we want to see. We can log in and we're able to log in. That's awesome. That's specifically what we want to see, that was the problem we had, we're able to verify by logging in seeing that the problem has now gone away. Alright, so that brings us to the end of our learning byte. Uh, this learning byte covered troubleshooting services in Contrail. Uh, we went through some CLI troubleshooting of the services, showed you how to troubleshoot that, and then we went back and verified through the GUI that, hey, things are working, that uh, supervisor web UI service is now working, everything is great, good, and so I, I hope this uh, learning byte will be helpful to you in your day-to-day -day work. And as always, thanks for watching. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology-specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community. From forums to social media, join the discussion.